So, Dr. Grieb, Dr. Lanzmann, Joe, um, I'm very happy to have the next few minutes to share with you uh, our experience of various extent of archery routings uh, in patients uh, for a combined vascular and endovascular approach of treating multi-segmental distal terrific, multi-segmental terrific aortic disease originating at the level of the arch. And I think that's the first important point. It's clear that these procedures are not suited for patients with ascending pathology extending up to the level of the arch, also not um, that well suited for isolated arch pathologies, but extremely suited for distal pathologies originating at the level of the arch, otherwise requiring a two-stage conventional surgical approach. What does archery routing actually mean? It means translocation of one, subclavian, two, left common carotid, or three, brachycephalic trunk, vessels for landing zone extension before endovascular repair. Let's start with classical subclavian to left common carotid artery transposition, which gained a revival uh, um, uh, during uh, these artery routing procedures as the original indication for occlusive disease uh, was uh, already a very rare one. And so I would like to take you shortly uh, through this video we use a small supraclavicular incision and approach the vessel between the two insertions of the sternocleidoid muscle. Uh, we extensively prepare the left common carotid artery. Uh, we extensively prepare the left vertebral artery, as you can see here, to get enough uh, access to the proximal portion. And we extensively prepare the left subclavian artery down to the level of the aortic arch. Then um, a clamp is being applied proximally. Then the vessel is being partly dissected, and this is done in order to have enough uh, control uh, for, the, uh, for the proximal stump. Uh, we do a double oversewing as well as reinforcement with uh, Teflon uh, pledges, and then after having secured the stump, we completely transect the vessel, because uh, you might well know that if you don't have sufficient uh, proximal bleeding control in the subclavian stump, you can get into troubles. And then a classical transposition between both vessels is being performed, and um, this can be done safely and quickly, thereby maintaining supraortic perfusion, not only uh, for the posterior cerebellar circulation, but especially for spinal cord perfusion. If uh, the, the, the arch pathology starts even more proximally. We go for an autologous approach where we use an upper hemisternotomy. The pericard remains closed and the supraortic branches are circumferentially dissected and uh, encircled with silastic tapes. And then the left common carotid artery is being transposed into the bracket cephalic trunk and the left subclavian artery in the already transposed left common carotid and the corresponding angiography shows a nice uh, proximal landing zone uh, for secure stand graft deployment. As said, we use an upper median hemisternotomy approach with a left lateral extension of the skin incision, which is uh, thought to be able to mobilize the supraortic vessels extensively to an, uh, to an extra thoracic level in order to be able to um, perform tension-free accomplishment of vascular transposition. Then the left common carotid artery is being clamped. Uh, the bracket cephalic trunk is tangentially clamped. Blood pressure control is via a catheter in the right radial artery. Um, this is extremely important not to depress uh, the amplitude of the uh, blood pressure amplitude. Then a left lateral uh, longitudinal incision is being made. An enterocyte anastomosis uh, between uh, the left common carotid artery and the trunk is being performed. And in the next step, the left uh, subclavian artery uh, is clamped um, at its origin um, and uh, transected, and an analogous uh, procedure is being carried out between the already transposed left common carotid artery and um, the left subclavian artery. And it's important for, to maintain the geometry of the, the arch and the supraortic vessels to orient this anastomosis to the dorsal portion uh, of the left common carotid artery. And this uh, shows the complete left uh, autologous double transposition. So um, there are 
also patients uh, where the uh, arch pathology is starting even more proximally, where we go um, for an alloplastic approach with an inverse bifurcated dacron prosthesis with an intocyte anastomosis of the proximal portion of the prosthesis to the ascending aorta, end to end with the first limb to the brachycephalic trunk, end to end with the second limb to the left subclavian with reinsertion of the left uh, common carotid into the branch to the left subclavian. It's optional to choose a tube graft from the ascending aorta to the trunk and use um, 8 millimeter dacron graft uh, to the uh, remaining supraortic vessels. This might be uh, supportive in reducing the threat of retrograde type A dissection because the anastomotic area in the ascending aorta is a shorter one. A short video uh, illustrating this procedure, t procedure tangential clamping of the ascending uh, aorta longitudinal incision, end-to-side anastomosis between the proximal portion of the prosthesis and the native vessel. In a second, sta a second step, um, um, transection of the bracket cephalic trunk with an end-to-end -end anastomosis between the first limb of the graft um, and the trunk. Um, it remains optional if one or both limbs of the prosthesis are guided ventral to the anonymous vein according to the individual anatomical situation. Um, and then uh, the second limb is then anastomosed to the left subclavian artery and the left common carotid artery is be being reinserted into this branch. And so uh, finally you will also always have patients where the ascending aorta is involved, either by substantial disease, as in this case, by, um, by a substantial aneurysm formation or by, um, by, um, by a dilation, as uh, Joe uh, has mentioned before. In these uh, patients, we go for a normal thermic total arch concept by ascending aortic replacement, which is accompanied by either a double transposition, uh, like in this case, or accompanied by total uh, archery routing. Uh, the uh, principle of, this, uh, of the archery routing procedure is as before, an endocyte anastomosis between uh, the brachycephalic trunk and the left common carotid artery is being performed. And this is followed uh, by the anastomosis between the already transposed left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery. It remains, um, it remains a matter of, subje of subjective decision, urgency, as well as individual setting. If the endovascular procedure is performed synchronously or metachronously, um, in this uh, case we did a synchronous um, uh, uh, procedure. This is the completion angiography before stand graft placement. Um, we prefer to use a device with a tip capture. The more proximally we do go in order to have a really accurate and, 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 and safe deployment uh, of the stent grafts. Now the second graft is being performed and in a few seconds you will see the completion and geography um, of the entire uh, procedure uh, containing aortic valve replacement, ascending replacement, double transposition as well as TVAR uh, for a one step um, for a one step repair of this extensive thoracic aortic pathology. Regarding our results, in hospital mortality, mortality including all variants of arch uh, rerouting, 6.8%, neurologic injury low, assisted early endoleak rate uh, acceptable. And if we go into detail, results with subclavian transposition, excellent. Results with double transposition, excellent. Results with total archery routing, still room for improvement. In our first 17 patients, we had three retrograde type A aortic dissections. Um, and um, we then uh, went into detail with several, uh, with several means in order to, to learn why this problem happened. And I think there are three theories um, who, um, uh, who uh, uh, do all have their, 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 val their, their validity. The first one is, a ta is clamping injury by apl application of the tangential clamp. The second one is the underlying pathology in patients with aneurysms on the basis of acute uh, of, on chronic aortic dissection. I think we have to understand that even in the morphologically normal ascending aorta, there is inherited, inher in, inherent disease. And finally, some kind of compliance mismatch between the highly elastic ascending aorta as well as the stent graft. In order to go uh, more deeper into the issue, we formed a transcontinental registry where five uh, centers per 
participated and we were lucky enough to include 66 patients. We observed an in-hospital mortality of 9%, a low rate of neurologic injury, and also a lower rate of retrograde type A dissection. And we feel this was already due to the uh, altered approach of replacing ascending uh, orthos with a diameter in our setting of more than 40 millimeters and in Joe's settings of more than 37 millimeters. What about early and late type 1 and type 3 endoleak rate, assisted early endoleak rate, not primary endoleak rate, assisted rate containing, um, uh, containing sealing of endoleaks by a watchful waiting strategy, reballoning or TVR extension, Excellent. So what about survival? Survival rate during a five-year period is a very acceptable one. And the orgic-related survival with regard to freedom from redo regarding the treated segments, excellent. So conclu concluding, a combined vascular and endovascular approach for the treatment of multisegmental thoracic aortic disease originating at the level of the arch uh, shows excellent results, especially with regard to subclavian and double transposition. Total archery routing still is a big operation, and adding a sending aortic replacement may eliminate the risk for retrograde type A dissection. Long-term results are favorable with regard to aortic-related survival as well as with regard to the need for reintervention. And we are convinced that these combined approaches are a highly attractive treatment modality, especially for elderly patients with multisegmental thoracic aortic pathology originating at the level of the aortic arch. Thank you.